The switch in the circuit is a make them break type of switch which allows for a continuous current flow. At time t is equal to zero, the switch moves from our position A right here to the position B. If we need to find for t greater than zero, we're going to redraw our circuit in the frequency domain and find the Laplace transform of the voltage V naught t. We're also going to find the inverse transform to find the time domain. So when we do this, we should redraw this. And when we redraw this, we are going to be in the S domain. This way we can then convert to time domain. So looking at this, initially, before time is zero, so when time is less than zero, we have our voltage going like this into the positive out of the negative, so that means our current is going to flow like this. So it's gonna go over the inductor, over this resistor, like this. So that's the current flow. Now we can redraw our diagram. Uh, we're going to start off with this inductor right here. So when we uh, draw this, we're going to close this switch like this. And when we close the switch, we're not going to have this 3 ohm resistor and this 24 volts that we're going to have to worry about anymore. There is some voltage over this inductor though, and we'll write that out in a second. So starting off, we are going to have our inductor nodes like this. Our inductor is going to be in here. And to make it to be in the S domain, we're going to do a 5.625 times S. So we're not going to have just an H for Henry's, we're just going to have S. Now we're going to draw the next part and we're really just redrawing this. The five ohm resistor is going to be the same in the S domain. And um, when we redraw this, we will connect this like this. And then we have this voltage right here. And this voltage, when we connect it, we're gonna also have to convert it to the S domain. It's still gonna be plus minus like this. It's going to be 25 I not like this. However, this is in the uh, regular domain, frequency domain, I think it's called and we need to convert it to S, so this is going to be instead like this. And we see that we then have another node right here. It's connected to right here. We have a capacitor right here. Well, now we need to convert our capacitor. And the conversion for a capacitor is going to be that our Z of C is equal to one over S times C. And so our C is this capacitance, which is 0 0.1, and we can write this as 10 divided by s. So our capacitance is going to be 10 over s. Now we're going to continue drawing this. We have our 20 ohm resistor right here, which we can draw in. We also have voltage across our 5 ohm resistor, which I forgot to draw. And that 5 ohm resistor should be right here. So we have the 5 ohms of resistance. And then we are going to have some voltage right here, plus minus. And then this is going to be a V naught we have an S in here. So that is the voltage here. Now there is some voltage across this inductor as well so we're gonna have a plus minus and then the voltage here. Well we need to find the voltage over here. So to do this we can look back at the frequency domain and the current between the two don't change. So let's find the current. We're gonna say that our I naught is going to be equal to a uppercase I naught, and this is when we convert it to the S domain. And this is, well, equal to Ohm's law, which is the voltage divided by the resistance. So we're going to have 24 divided by 3, and this gives us 8 amps. So that means there's 8 amps flowing through this whole red part. So that means we can now find the voltage here, because we know that voltage is equal to current times resistance, or in this case, impedance, of our inductor. So we are going to have this 8 amps times this 5.625. And once we do that, we are going to get that we have 45 volts across this inductor. So that is going to be the voltage here. Now everything looks good. We do need to convert this last I naught right here though. So this I naught, it's going to look like this. We have some current going through here and it's going to be like this. 
and it's going to have an S behind it. And this should also have an S behind it, again, because we are in the uh, S domain now and not the frequency domain. So this is what everything is going to look like. So from here, we want to find our Vs and our V0t. Well, we can do that using mesh current. And we can use mesh current because we have this node right here, and we also have this node right here. So now in solving for this, we're going to look at the voltage flowing in through all these places. And to use the voltage, we also have to look at the current. So looking at the current for all of this, we know that there, because of this right here, and because of the make then break, which allows for continuous current flow, we are going to have some current flowing over through like this, because we can see that through here. We are also going to have some that goes like this, some that'll go across here, and then we have current flow this way. Now, this capacitor is going to be outputting some current, and we know that the current flowing through this way is going to push some current this way, and then it's going to push some current this way. Now that's for this green node. For this gray node right here, well, if we look at this voltage right here, we can see it's into the positive, and out of the negative. And we know that the current is usually in the direction of voltage rise, so it's going to be in the opposite direction. And since it's in the opposite direction, we can also see that we have some current going out this way. And knowing all this, we can use the mesh current method. So starting this off with the gray one, we're going to look at the gray part first. We can see that we have a negative v naught s. And our negative v naught s comes from the voltage from here, because the capacitor shares the voltage because the um, voltage is charging the capacitor. So we have a negative V naught S and it's coming up from here. And then we have a plus 25 I naught S, which is this part right here. This part is positive because it's going away from our node and this part is negative because it's going into our node. So we are going to have our plus 25 I and then S. And then, well, we have this I naught S right here. Well, the voltage across this entire part right here, we can say that we have a V, and this is going to be a different V than our other voltages. And since this is a different V, what we're going to do is say, well, we have a V1 S, and this is going to be equal to the resistance over it, which is this 20, times our I naught S, because this is the current flowing through it. And so our V1S is equal to 20 i naught s. So we can do an addition 20 i and then an s. And this is equal to 0. So rewriting this, we are going to get a V naught s is equal to a 45 i naught s. And so that is what we're going to get for here. And this is the first part of our problem. Now we need to find our i naught of s and we need to find this and just to clarify this v1 is the voltage over here and since it's in parallel with this it's also going to be the voltage right here so this is now what our messy diagram will look like we have these two voltages they're in parallel with each other and then we have this v naught s right here and we have this 45 volts and so knowing all this, we can now write the second part of our mesh current method. We're looking at our green node. And for our green node, we are going to have our V naught S. And this is going to be minus our 45 volts. And this is happening over the inductor. So we have to put this over the inductor, which is 5.625 S. Now we're going to have a plus, we're going to add this voltage that's going out of it, so we are going to have a V naught S divided by the resistance, which is 5, plus we have our voltage from the capacitor here, and this is going to be the V1 over our 10 divided by S. I did forget something though, 
uh, you want to make sure you write an S in here as well because that's important because we're in the S domain. And then from here we're going to have a plus V1 S and this is divided by the 20 because we have to factor in the voltage that's over this or actually sorry the current that's over this because if we look at all these we have voltage divided by some kind of impedance or resistance and that will give us the current. So we would have to add these two currents together to get this total part that's going away from it. So this is going to be equal to zero. And now we can solve this. So we'll factor out our V0S. And so our V0S is here. And then inside of here, we are going to have a one over 5.625S plus one over S. And that's just from this first part. Next, we are going to have a plus V1S, and then inside of here, we are going to have our S over 10 plus 1 over 20, and this is going to be equal to, and we'll just take this and move it to the right, so we have a 45 divided by 5.625S. And then we can even actually simplify this further, as well as plug this in. Now, we want to find for our V0, so we can't plug in our V0. What we can do, though, is solve for this I0. Say we have V1S divided by 20 is equal to I0S. And we can plug this in. And then we can um, plug the V1 in. So if we do this and this together, we are going to have a V0S divided by 45. And then this is going to be set equal to v one S, and then we're just going to have the 20 over here. So we are going to have a 20 over 45 V naught S be equal to our V1 S. And then we can plug this in as well as simplify. So plugging this in and simplifying, we're going to get a V naught S, then inside of here, because we're multiplying it by 5 plus 5.625 S, and this is divided by we have our 28.125s plus, once that's closed, a v naught s and it's a v naught s because we are going to be plugging this into here, into our V1 right here. So we have the v naught s 20 over 45, and then we can combine these together, and then we're going to get a 2s plus 1 divided by 20 and this is equal to 45 divided by 5.625 s and now we can divide out the 20s so those will cancel out and now we can go a little bit further we want to get our v naught s by itself so to get the v naught s by itself like this we can do some math we're going to combine this with this and then we want to move it over to the right hand side. Well, if we do this, we are going to get 1,000 or 100 or 10,125. And this is all divided by 225 plus 253 plus 125 S plus 56.25 S squared plus 28.125 S. And then we can simplify this and then divide everything by 56.25s squared. And if we do this, we are going to get our v naught s is equal to 101.25 divided by, and then inside of here, we're going to have 5.625s squared plus 281.25s. And then we have some more that we have to write down, so we can move this over and say that we also have a plus 225. And this is our V naught. We can then simplify it a little bit further and say that we have a V naught S. This is equal to 180 divided by, we have our S squared plus 5S plus 4. So this is going to be our final V naught S. And we can zoom out a little bit. We can see that we've solved for the first part. We found our V of S. So we are going to have 180, and this is being divided by our S squared plus 
5s plus 4. And so that is our answer for part A. Now, for part B, what we're going to have to do is do some differential equations math. We can rewrite this. It's going to be v naught s is equal to 10125. And then this is being divided by, and we have this right here, but we're going to need to factor uh, two things out. And we're going to get an s plus 4, and we're going to get an s plus 1. And this is going to be equal to the a over our s plus 4 plus the b over our s plus 1. And now we can say, well, we need to solve for a and we need to solve for b. Two different ways we can do this. I'm going to use the heavy side cover up method where we take our a and then it's over our s plus 4. And this is equal to the 101. Actually, sorry, this should not be 10125. This should be 180. So we're going to have 180. This is divided by the s plus 4 and then s plus 1. Now, to zero this out, we would say s is equal to negative 4. But we can cancel out our s plus 4s. Now we can plug in our negative 4 for s. And if we do that, we are going to get that our a is equal to 180 divided by a negative 3, which will give us a negative 60. And so that is the answer for a. For b, we're going to have b over s plus 1 is equal to 180 divided by s plus 4 over s plus 1. And then inside of here, we know that we can't use the s is equal to negative 4 again, but we can use an s is equal to negative 1. Our s plus 1s are going to cancel out, and we can plug those in here, and we're going to get that our b is equal to 60. And so plugging these back in to this equation right here, because it's equal to our v naught s. So since it's equal, we can just plug it in. We're going to have a negative 60 divided by our s plus 4 plus the 60 over our s plus 1. Now, what do we do from here? Well, if we look at the notes in the description linked below the like button. We can see that we can go from the s domain to the time domain. And to do this, we are going to use the following equation, where we have the time domain, e negative a t, is equal to 1 over s plus a. Now, when we rewrite this for the current two that we have right here, we're going to do it separately. We are going to have a negative 60 e negative 4t. And then we're going to have a plus we're going to have the 60 e negative t. And so this is going to be the answer to the second part. When you plug this in, just the way that this problem is, it's kind of funky plugging it in. We are going to have a 60, and then we are going to have a negative 1 for the first part. So it's kind of flipped in our answer. We're going to have a minus 60, and then we're going to have a negative 4. And so this is how you would go about solving for this problem. Uh, it's a little bit tricky, but main focus is on node current method. And this is all the work that we had to do to get this problem.